I'm going to show you a little bit of what our curriculum looks like and what our homeschooling day looks like. Maybe I'll do a video one day and just show little little peaks of us actually doing the curriculum. But for right now, I'm just going to show you the curriculum we use and uh, and and how how the day kind of flows. Yes, Lance. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Um, so we use the curriculum called Sunlight, and we love it because it is literature-based. And what that means is that instead of having just a textbook and workbook, textbook and workbook, textbook and workbook for every subject, this has a nice stack of different books. Um, it, it keeps things flowing a little bit. It gives different uh, kind of views, different um, ways of understanding the time frame we're learning. So like we are, are studying Civil War this year, or we're studying American history, but Civil War was one of the things that we studied. So we have kind of a, um, well, let me show you, one of our books, which is, um, you know, it's a, a DK book. Um, we have some Usborne books. But, so there may be something in here that kind of gives us some of the facts about the Civil War. Um, and then we would actually have a reader, like, uh, like a, a chapter book that goes, let's see, what would be one that we had? Like this was one of our books that we read. Um, so we, we would learn about facts maybe in this book, and then our reader for the day, we read one chapter a day, um, you know, from a, a novel that was written, from a, a paperback book, chapters, and, and kind of giving a little bit more of what children may have felt like, what the home life would have been like, what, um, you know, them trying to find a newspaper and what politics would have would have been like in that time frame. Um, so I like it because it gives the uh, a, a variety of sources to help these guys understand what we're studying, not just here's a fit. Excuse me. Here's a fact. Memorize it. Here's a fact. Memorize it. Here are dates. Memorize it. And then the kids never really understand what was the purpose in Civil War. What were the North? You know, what, what were the what, uh, were the Confederates and the North and the Union? What what's the whole idea behind the war? What's the purpose for it? And I really love that because maybe. For the most part, I would say that they can tell me the dates and, and when things start it, when they end it. But more importantly, they are, they are able to tell me the heart behind historical events. And I just, I love that. Um, so anyway, let me show you kind of what sunlight looks like. Um, no matter what curriculum you use, well, I take that back. A lot of the curriculums that you can use today have it already planned out for you. So you can go day one day two, you know, all of your 180 days, and it is literally just planned out for you. It will tell you, read two, you know, two pages from this book, this book, this book, and it's already planned, and you can just go, kind of go by that. So this is what sunlight looks like. Um, you know, you get your own binder, and then you put these in there, but it's kind of dirty. But this is our cover. We are in Core E this year, um, the second part of American history. We're going into the World War. So this is this is how our day starts. So on on this side, well let me let me back up. Not just our day starts. But I have all of these tabs for for each week that we're on, okay? So each week you can you can look at each week and say, "Oh, these are the this is the list of books I'm going to be using for this for this particular week." Um, you know, it may be it may be different for each week. We just finished up week 15. For those homeschoolers watching this and you are further ahead, don't judge us. I don't know if we're behind or if we're right on schedule. But anyway, we start our day with Bible. We usually gather around the kitchen table. Sometimes we cozy in the classroom, grab our Bibles. We read what they are telling us to read. And we have literally, we are going through consecutively the, um, the, the whole Bible. Now, when they were younger, we had um, like beginner Bibles. We had some picture Bibles you know, that we've gone through already to kind of know that highlighted the stories, you know, in the Bible. Um, but was it, did it start this year or last year? I think it started last year where we are literally reading from our Bible, like the real chapters. So anyway, so that, 
is what these guys do. And I have them, they, they each have journals. After we read this, we talk about it. We find out what our highlights are. I send them to their bedrooms to pray and journal and just write down, what is God telling you? What's the quote unquote moral of the story? What did you learn today? Was it kindness, peace, be strong, courageous, you know, whatever. All right. And then, so you go through this whole list. So like, um, this is my stack of books here. So, like on Monday, we had to read a chapter out of this book, okay, and um, and then we were reading like from this chapter book. That's um, so we may be learning about like like this this like right now over the last couple of weeks we've been learning about. Um, the early 1900s and how the inventions and the railroad and um, how the go-getters, you know, people are expanding in the West and um, and very successful, how America was very successful um, with, um, you know, in the early 1900s. But what is really cool is that we learn about some of the facts from this book and then we're reading about like what people, you know, from a chapter book, we're learning a little bit more of the the. Um, feel of it like what did people say what was their slang sometimes these books are hard to read because you're you have to talk in kind of their accent or whatever anyway that's kind of veering off the subject but anyway I, I love this because more books that we read more chapters explaining what's going on in this in this uh, in this era um, so in in one week we may be reading you know, a little bit from this whole stack of books. It might be two pages from each one or whatever, but all of it is giving a little bit more of a story of, of the idea of what that, his, you know, the time in history is like. Those are a lot of words to explain what I'm trying to say. But um, this is going to look like the kids kind of laugh at the pictures of this, but this is really cool. This is, it's called We Sing, the W E E, you know. This can be for little ones too, but this is actually part of our curriculum because it has the songs of America, like you know Yankee Doodle. It has the um, the Battle Hymn of the Republic, um, uh, you know America the Beautiful. You know some of those songs. You know because as homeschoolers, it's like oh yeah, there are all these American songs, and you want to teach your your kids these things. Um, Get along, little doggies. Um, yeah, the Army song, the the um, the Navy song, you know, so some of the historical things. So we may listen to that. And then it also tells us, so you can look here again. So here is our history for the week. So day one, we read this. That's it. We, we read this, and then we read a chapter of our great wheel. And then the kids had to read by themselves, Old Yeller. So day two, we did Bible. They read this, these, or we all read these couple of pages. And then um, the we sing. I've been working on the railroad. That's what we were listening to this week. Um, the Great Wheel, another couple of chapters. Um, this is a poetry book. It's really cool, too, because the way Sunlight has done it. Um, I don't have my poetry. Oh, yes, I do. Um, they, 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 put, they take so much time to put all of this stuff together. I just love it. Uh, to organize it. So these are poets that have been writing during this time frame. So like during the Civil War, you have, we, we've read poetry from um, some of the people who are literally writing about um, freedom or um, the war. And it's, it just gives a little bit more of an um, insight as to how people are feeling and thinking during, during such a, uh, a dark time of, of war. So anyway, so this is that this is sunlight. Like I said, we could be reading just a little bit of this every day. I would say just for this portion of homeschooling, start to Bible. Uh, we take at least thirty minutes for Bible, and then they go up and they journal and stuff. And I would say probably we allow probably forty-five minutes. You know, maybe less some days. For Bible, that's just our most important thing is Bible. And then we come here, and we do this, and I would say core last probably 30 minutes to 40, no, maybe an hour, about an hour, because the, sometimes the chapter books are a little bit longer to read those, okay? 
And then what's really fun too is that, so we come in here, we do Bible, they go up and journal, and when they come back down, we do a little bit of history. And then when it's time to actually do the readers, like when I'm reading the chapter books, um, we go in the kitchen and we all make smoothies. And then so we're drinking smoothies and we're being a little bit healthy too. So they're getting their kale and collard greens. You like the kale and collard greens, right, Olivia? She's, she's grinning. But anyway, you can't taste it. So that's our little healthy thing. But anyway, um, it's kind of fun too because it's time together as a family. We can put a fire in the fireplace and cozy. Sometimes we save these readers for daddy, for my husband, to read at nighttime. So instead of turning the TV on, Pat is grabbing the reader and reading a chapter to the kids and me. And we just all sit around and listen to daddy read, which is kind of, kind of nice. It's fun. So that's that. Um, then uh, let me come over this way. Oh, get our messy house. But whatever. Um, but yeah, this is our science table-ish. Um, and it's also our geography and puzzle table. But so the kids are each in, they're in different science cores. So, um, Olivia, that's her science book. Um, one of them. I, I will show you in just a minute that we have a whole bunch more books over there. Um, so she has this one, Lance has this one, um, you know, just, it's just a portion of what, it's the same thing, science does the same thing with, you know, telling us, um, oh, this was so cool, because this had, Lance was learning um, a little more of physics and, and um, how things work, and so he read a diary of an early American boy, and he's literally helping his dad build things on their farm, and he has this diary that he's writing, and then, uh, so you're reading that diary, which is historical, and then you, um, uh, you, it also has another book where you're literally learning, oh, what, what was the fulcrum, what was, you know, the different parts, and, and how they built a bridge, or how they used simple machines um, in, in real history. So that was really, really cool. But science is the same way. And science probably takes 30 minutes. There's also DVDs that we can watch for science, which are kind of fun. So, but, um, let me show you two of the, the other science books. Um, let's see. Is this, yeah. So, like, science, it's not just one textbook. So here's one of them that they would be reading, and like I said, it's, it just depends on the day and what they're asking us to do. Electricity, magnetism, the tops, um, you know, these are usually like once a week that we do the experiments out of them. The astronomy in space, um, light and color, um, and, then, and then when you get their science, it comes with the kit as well. So you get the kit with all of the things you need for, or I'd say most of them. Most of them, like you may need paper towels, which come from your kitchen that you have to supply yourself. But yeah, so that would be science that these guys do, and that's that's sunlight science. And then, okay, so we use for sunlight, we use the core, which is the Bible, history, memorization, and um, things like that. We also use sunlight for their science. Um, we even use sunlight's writing program, their language arts. We have to um, supplement that. I use a Becca um, language arts because Sunlight does not provide, but they do have options for workbooks. They've gotten a little bit better with that. But I actually like a Becca's language arts. So these guys, um, they were a little bit more fun you know, in the earlier grades, but um, like Lance's language A and Olivia's C. So it's just a workbook that goes through parts of speech and, you know, and they actually do a research paper. Um, Lance is fourth grade, so in, in here, did he do a research paper last year in sunlight? I don't know. But Rebecca has them doing research papers this year. Okay, so, um, so I, I augment and supplement sunlight's language arts because I'm not crazy about their language arts, but I love sunlight. Okay, and then um, we also have to do math. So that's the thing with sunlight. You get to choose which math program you want to use. We chose Horizons. Even though they say you're not supposed to do it this way, we needed something colorful. So when, when Olivia came, I'll tell a little story on you, Olivia, my, film, my filmer, 
my video videographer here, I'm going to tell a story on her. When she was little and we had this really boring, repetitive, or boring for her, repetitive um, curriculum that was just black and white, she would, she would have tears coming to math and she didn't want to do it. And, oh, and she would just suffer through math with her big alligator tears. And I just always felt bad. So then I went to Mardell's, which is in Colorado and is the most wonderful homeschooling um, store and motivator, motivating store that you can go to. But anyway, I saw some Horizons books there and I was like, oh, clowns and balloons and colorful things. So that's why I chose Horizons. It had nothing else to do <laughs> with how smart she would be. It was just, oh, this is colorful and this will teach her how to add, subtract, and multiply and divide. And then that went well and we've stayed with Horizons. The only catchy thing with, with Horizons is that it just goes through Sixth grade? No, seventh grade. Six or seven. Six, seven. Anyway, it goes up to, I think maybe they have a pre-algebra this year. So it goes there and then that's it. So then I'm questioning, okay, then what are we going to go to after then? I'm looking at teaching textbooks. That's probably going to be the route that I go, but we shall see. Time can has a way of changing things. It may help me change my mind. But anyway, we love, love Horizons, and it's worked great. And for these guys, I have to say they have, when they test, they do test, you know, probably a grade, maybe a little bit more above what um, maybe some of the standardized tests. Um, so not, just because this introduces algebra and it introduces geography. I mean, my kids, of course, with Olivia filming this, of course, I'm going to say that she's super, super duper smart. But it's not necessarily, it's because of what they teach and, and what they, uh, and this is a, um, a spiral method so they're learning something and then the next day they may learn a little bit something else and then it spirals around to like revisit what they've learned last week um, I find that we like that way better I know so many people do like master one thing and then move on but I feel like when they go back and revisit it that it keeps when they keep revisiting it it helps it to stick that's just my opinion um, that uh, sequential spelling which Sunlight has a different theory. They have them reading, reading, reading so many books. We are just in books all day long, just constantly books. Their theory is they read, read, read. And uh, there are some other workbooks that they do, but they don't actually introduce a spelling book. I know, here come the daggers. They don't introduce a spelling book until like fourth or fifth grade. Um, they do a lot of copy work. They do a lot of writing, especially in those earlier years with their language arts. Um, so they're always working with words. Same thing with uh, language arts books. They're constantly writing words and working with words, um, working a little bit with phonics and stuff. So that kind of helps them with spelling. But um, they get into sequential spelling at fourth or fifth. So there's that. Sunlight also has some critical thinking workbooks. These are all in addition to the core, okay? Wordly wise, that's vo vocabulary. Um, you know, they can do, these are wordly wise. We kind of had to do the math on this because I think there's only what, 20 weeks. So we kind of divvy that up. So they only do wordly wise, maybe two pages a week or something, two or three pages a week to, um, to, you know, cause there's 36 weeks and there's only 20 weeks of this. Oh, uh, let's see what else. Oh, there's another science book. Uh, oh, here's more science, little science books. Um, so Mathtacular, which is kind of like a video series, and then they have the workbooks. Okay, so so let me show you one more quick thing. I, this is so vague because every grade is different, and the um, the the littler grades, like I said, they have cuter books and maybe a little bit more fun books and um, fun things to do. But I mean, we still have fun. We just we enjoy this. We enjoy the homeschooling. All right, so let's show. I actually wrote this out and laminated it what our their checklist so each of them have one so Olivia has one on her side and Lance has one on his side that is needs to continue like erased but anyway so like this is our checklist so Bible history and core which is the same thing mommy reader which is like the chapter book that enhances the history okay so and that's all inclusive in sunlight and then they do their uh workbooks 
depends on, and you can do it in different orders. So they have their math. Mathtacular is probably like a once a week kind of thing, the video that they watch and then do their little workbook to enhance it, more like with word problems and stuff this year. And here's science, and a lot of it, what is really cool is um, since I have, um, or since um, these guys can read quite well, a lot of the science they can go and read themselves. So a lot of this, by the time that they get, Lance, I still have to work with him, you know, of course I have to work with him. But a lot of the stuff, like Olivia, she can go on and do her own thing. And since she knows how to read and can understand instructions and directions, she can actually go and do math. And she has learned many of the concepts all by herself without me having to help her. She, um, they'll have the examples in there and she can kind of read it and, and do it herself. So that's kind of cool. And same thing with science. I have to keep an eye on it and see, okay, what are you learning about? And then... Um, and just kind of make sure it's something that, um, you know, that they don't need me too much. And, when, and then with experiments, of course, I come in and we do experiments together. And then they have their own readers um, that they do, which Old Yeller was one that they did this week. Um, so core, these guys do it together. History and uh, science they used to do together, but just this year is the first time they split off doing different sciences. And you just teach to the older child. Um, with history and science, you just teach to the older child and allow the younger child to kind of to pick up what they're going to pick up. And it's amazing what they pick up. Um, uh, sunlight, I think they do maybe a range of three grades. Four grades might be a little bit much. But with their core in science, you can teach, uh, say, like, you know, fourth to sixth grade together in these areas. And then you split off in their own math. Of course, Lance has a fourth grade math. Olivia has a sixth grade math. Okay, so moving on, they have their readers. I have a Sunlight Language Arts, which is a Becca. That's what we use. And, oh, sorry, Sunlight Language Arts is like their copy work and some of their research papers and stuff that, oh, let me show you this real quick. I'm talking about the language arts. I'm trying to scurry along so this isn't like a 45-minute documentary. So, like, this is week 15. This is the core. If you flip it over on this side, here is the language arts. So there's spelling. There's handwriting, grammar. There's nothing on this week but the grammar mechanics. But we have the wordly wise. Oh, here's wordly wise. Okay. So um, dictation. So they, you know, there's just different things that they do. Like they, they may have to. So this week they were writing a fairy tale, or keeping a diary. Sunlight just kind of helps them to be creative with their writing, whereas a Becca helps them with the mechanics of their writing. Does that make sense? So they might write a poem a haiku, they may have to do a an interview and actually write, you know, the interview, write an essay. You know, it's more of that creative of writing that way, whereas a Becca, their workbooks are teaching the mechanics of verbs, adjectives, and things. Okay, and then they go through the checklist, spelling, wordly wise, critical thinking, Spanish, Olivia does Rosetta Stone. And that count and that actually counts when they're in high school, that actually counts for um, colleges. You can put that down. And then typing. Olivia has a typing program online. Or no, a, a software. And then their extracurricular activity. And that would be for Olivia, she does ballet. And for Lance, he does gymnastics. And both of them are doing like lots of hours. Lance does like, I think he's doing like 16 hours of gymnastics a week because he loves it. Loves it, loves it so much. And then Olivia is doing dance and she's loving, loving, loving that as well. She is there probably four nights a week now. Five nights. Doing four nights maybe. And then uh, she does some jazz and, and she does choir. So we do some of the extracurricular activities as well. So anyway, that is probably more of an infomercial on sunlight <laughs> than it is, you know, with homeschooling in general. Because everybody's homeschooling experience can be different. Um, I mean, I remember when these guys were little, we would come in in the classroom and we would gather around. They would sit on the floor, I think, or maybe in your little teeny chairs. And we had this CD thing. We had this like this big flip folder that had like, you know, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. You know, we all, we did those. We did those fun songs or the weather. We had this big calendar that was on the wall. And um, we would say, what day is it today? And they put the day on, they put the number on. And what's the weather like today? I think we had a little weather bear. And we had to dress, the, you know, like with Velcro. He was like, 
cut out in cute little shapes. And what's the weather today? How do we need to dress our bear? And he'd get a warm sweater or, you know, put a little bathing suit on him or whatever it was. You know, that was kind of fun. Um, we would go on nature walks. Um, in those early years, it was so much fun to do school and then be done early and head out. Now, with everything, now that we've gotten into the groove of it, I would say that these guys are done probably, probably by 1 o'clock. You know, some days if we're writing like a big paper or something, um, it may be a little bit longer than that. But I would say most days we're done. Some days they're even done at 12, which is really cool. And then they can just relax in their rooms and chill out, which is kind of fun. Or, uh, you know, Libby got a sewing machine. She may do a craft or something. Uh, Lance, you know, what does he do? Oh, today he was having an adventure out in our fort because we have a really cool fort that's in our backyard in the trees. So, but anyway, that is our homeschooling day. Rush through. What minute? How many minutes have I been talking, Olivia? 25. 25 minutes. Okay, I think it's time to cut. <laughs> All right, so there it is. There is just a, a look into our homeschooling day. And um, there are so many other curriculums out there. There are online curriculums. There are, um, thing, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, Becca, Bob Jones. There are so many other things and different styles and different ways of teaching the kids uh, with different, different kind of things. We like the literature base because we get to cozy up and, and uh, um, get a little bit more than just the textbooks. That's just our own thing. Other people like textbooks, and that's fine, too. So anyway... That is it. So, that's it.